Always great chatting with my next guest. Yancey Medeiros is going to be back in action on May 22nd at UFC Fight Night. He's going to be taking on Demir Hazovic. Uh, Yancey, how's it going, man? Uh, like, like I said, man, no complaints. <laughs> Woke up on an island, not hungry, not, not cold. Uh, grateful. Grab, yeah. uh, a lot of... Living in paradise, man. It looks uh, it looks awesome. Yeah. Um, it's been a bit since we've seen you in the cage. I think the last time you were in action was uh, back in February. Was that by design, or were you trying to get a fight sooner? What, what's what, what, what's sort of the reason for the layoff? I mean, over um, the pandemic here, we had some. You know, during summer, I had to make some adjustments. But fall and winter, we had just some. I just had some mis mis miscalculations, some mishaps with my camp. We had to get things right and in order. So. Other than that, we're just waiting for negotiations and, you know, led to, to everything has a reason. So we led to me um, next week, May 22nd. And here we are, bro. I'm happy, happy to be, happy to be back. So what, 15 months. So, you know, really want to get in there and show everybody, show everybody what, what, what I haven't been showing them. Yeah, no, we're we're really excited for it. Was part of that as well. I know talking to Tyson Nam, he was telling me that the you know the restrictions in Hawaii with the pandemic were pretty tough. Like trying to train, did you experience that as well? Yeah. Oh yeah, all of us did. I mean, I was training with Tyson Nam in our small little pods, and you know we had these things where we had to we had to do a lot of adjusting. So did everybody else during this pandemic. You know, in in every in every single profession there was. So no complaints, but there was a lot of adjustments and things that change that we have to you know just inevitable bro change gotta yeah. gotta know how to deal yeah. with it <laughs> gotta gotta right? adapt and i think the thing was is like we kind of knew things weren't gonna go back to normal like there's not gonna be a normal this is the new norm apparently right now we've been in it for a year so that's what we did we just made the best of that and fortunately everybody's been healthy everybody's been safe you know like everybody ain't got no drama about um Pro vaccine, no vaccine. You know, everybody has a good boundary, respect, and an understanding for everything, and we're all just safe and pretty net, um, cleanly. You know, we really try and be cleanly with our choices, and just made healthier choices throughout the this last, you know, this last year, which I'm sure everybody else did. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, and then the other thing, uh, you know, because I mentioned we haven't talked in a bit, is you have new management now. You're with Iridium Sports. Tell me how this all came together. Oh, that was part of the change I wanted. I just wanted to try and um. You know, like I feel like I'm always about connecting with people naturally, and I just, I just wanted a different change of a change of pace, and you know, a new energy. Not, not, not that. Kind of say like, turn the page of my book for 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 not 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 a change of book, but a new page and start something start something fresh and energetic. And I really like I really liked how I felt like Jason Jason and the team was gonna make me worry. Um, all I had to do is concentrate what's in the octagon, not outside. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so far, they've been there um, doing doing that for me, and you know, getting me, getting me, getting me what I need to do to take care of my responsibilities. And, and I'm sure Tyson put in a good word too. He's been a long member of Iridium as well, as far as management, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't the fact that I wasn't ready to work with everybody. I just had I, I just had a good thing going on in my in my end, and then I just we just needed changes. So I wanted to make some some changes with my stuff, like everybody does. The whole world did it. Why can't I? Exactly. No, <laughs> I like it. I like this. In, yeah, improvements, yeah, man. You, you know, got to try new things. I like it. Yeah, like, and, and, it's, and it's not necessarily new for me. I mean, we all we meet from Jason being a manager, the whole team is the same shit, different toilet. But it's about how do you connect with people, or how do you connect with someone and enhance you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Enhance you or enable you to do better, not enable you to be worse. So those are the things, and I feel like so far, you know, like I've been able to do that awesome. with with I, um, with myself and and with and with the team. Let's talk about your opponent, Demir Hazovic, uh, thirteen and six record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, I feel like he's gonna bring the best out of me, right? When the wait is over for me. Like I'm tired of waiting on myself. I really wasn't, really not. I mean, I hate losing more than I like winning, and I really wanna. I just looked at my last fights, and I'm just like, damn, bro, I'm waiting. Like when I was when I when I came in to UFC I wasn't waiting on anything and I'm not saying waiting like I just like you know I just I just gotta put the gas pedal on there with my tenacity I gotta go in there like when I fought Yves Edwards like, not necessarily no fear but just get in there and implement me 
in the last three fights, I'm kind of just too passive with things, and it's just like, bro, that's not how I am when I'm when I'm with the boys, when I'm when I'm when I'm in the gym, when I'm under the lights, I'm just being too analytical with myself instead of just letting myself flow and letting myself go like how I used to. Like when I went when I went up to 170, I was like, I had a chip on my shoulder. I was like, oh, you guys think you can just run me over? Yeah, right, right. And I fought a 205. I've always felt like that, and now it's like I got that. I guess that chip again, it's just like, bro, I'm a vet in this game and I ain't even, I ain't ever quitting. I ain't never going to retire. Just, what, what is retirement? I've been training since I've been training. And the thing is, it's just, there ain't no quitting me. I just want to get better and I'm going to show that next weekend. Who you mainly been training with for this camp as far as training partners uh, ahead of this fight? Um, I mean, Gracie Technics a lot. We've been, um, Gracie Technics, I've, I've worked with Max a little. We just finished some sparring today, but a lot of it, I'm with, um, doing, um, at West Oahu MMA and West Side Striking, I've been helping. Um, there's a lot of guys on the West Side that's been helping me. And Gracie Technics, some Hawaii Elite boys, Tyson Nam. We all we all collaborate together. I, mean, I would end up naming the whole roster, bro. Everybody. Right. Yeah. Like, we'll we'll be here all there. night, all day. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, all night. But I mean, like, I really try and utilize Hawaii. Yeah, you it's good. I mean? What we can get, and we're on that page of like, we try and get better, not 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 try and hurt. Like, you know, we we put in work. There's yeah. points where now, like, we're 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 out of we're at a point in a point in um where we like if I was sparring with Max or Keone Diggs, Maki Pitola, everybody like if you catch me, you caught me. It's not because you was trying to hurt me. And we understand that part. So we just grow off of that. So like me and Max now, we ain't over there trying to wing each other out. Like, you know, I'm for instance, our sparring sessions ain't nothing ain't looking like cater and what and you know what I mean? Back right, the, no, of uh, course. Yeah. On, but on on either end, like we ain't trying to do that. You know, everything's about keeping accountable for what for 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 what's happened to us like pop we're not getting emotional we're making our adjustments right and we just be able to implement that during the fight that's we already cool. know we're tough i already know i'm gritty i already know i can go in there and i'll die bro that's why the ref is there the ref is there to save me or stop me from you know what i mean or stop stop the guy so that's 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 why i'm there and i'm just been happy that we've been able to flow and being in this game for so long bro you always just trying to hard work but you want to be injury free yeah, no, it's smart. You got like, to train smart, right? Especially as you get older. And um, I say it the, I've seen it the best. And what's going on with all these OG vets that just keep fighting? But you fight long enough, shit happens. <laughs> you, you, that you see that like good and bad. So you got to make sure you're on point and you're healthy, and you're not. You, you, um, I feel like a lot of my injuries have been impeding me from performing my best. No, no, no excuses. But I got to work through that, and I got to show that I've been working on that shit next week. Uh, you mentioned Max Holloway. Uh, any sense on what his next move is? Because he's kind of in a tough spot with, I, I think he should be fighting the winner of Volkanovski and Ortega, but that fight got delayed now because of the ultimate fighter and because of COVID. So is yeah. he sort of just waiting yeah. around to, to for that fight to conclude? Or is he thinking about maybe getting a fight in between? What, what, what's the sense you sort of get from, from talking to him? Well, I mean, for the most part, like, when I'm always at Max, even with Nate, bro, those are like my brothers, right? But I never talk to them. Oh, when's the... I connect with them, and like when I see them more in the gym, I know something's happening. You know, and then we start talking and whatnot. But for the most part, I know he's trying to get a fight. I know he's trying to stay active. Summer, mm-hmm. he's trying to get something in summer. He never really talk details of dates, but I've we've he's been coming into the gym more. We've been connecting more, and we've been training more. So something's coming up. But it's like we when we really say stuff, we 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 say when it's locked in. There's like, oh yeah, it's when you get in one fight. I'm like, man, I don't know. Like you're saying this stuff, but. I ain't gonna say I got it until I the contact the contract is signed, right? So yeah. it's kinda how we flow with it. But he's staying busy. He's staying busy and he's light. <laughs> That's great. Uh you mentioned the Diaz yeah. brothers. Do you, do you how, when was the last time you spoke to them? Because I know you used to train with them a lot. Uh, I just I haven't spoke with Nick in a minute. You know, he's been on a run getting his training involved, but I just spoke with Nick couple, um last month. Um yeah, about last month and you know, we was just training. I was trying to collaborate with him, but then we ended up getting booked the same time. With, with fights, you know, prior prior to this weekend, like last month. So I was trying to get in there, but, you know, that didn't happen. But he's been training. So I try and get in there before camp happens for me. I used to finish camp up there, but now I have a great team over here that, you know, can work around and I can remain injury-free and I don't need to do a lot of adjusting. Cool. So, but hopefully, you know, get this win, get, get, get in there and, you know, get back in there and help me out with his camp. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you all plant based now? I remember you were big into that the last time we spoke in terms of your weight yeah. cut. And I'm sure that makes things a little bit easier when you're just eating plants as opposed to a lot of meat, right? 
yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Still plant based, bro, for sure. Yes, yes. Good for you. I am. You also yeah. mentioned, I don't know if you remember this last time, you talked about maybe going to featherweight. Is that still on the table or is that something, you know, I you mean, have to look I, down below? I honestly, I honestly feel like I could, bro. I'm like 166 right now. Wow. You okay, know? cool. I'm actually, but that's the thing, like, I'm actually just, I feel better and stronger than in my last camp. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm just like looking at my last, my last, my last. Like physique, I'm about like damn, bro. I gotta get better in all these things. That's what I did. I was just like, bro, I try to over critique myself. I was like, yeah, you need to work on this, 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 this. So it's kind of what I did. And like, weight's been good, strength's been great. Like, I cannot, I can't complain, bro. I'm just happy. I'm happy to get in there. Who's gonna be in your corner for this fight? Uh, Rylan Lazares, Ivan Flores, and um, Uncle Mike, my Uncle Mike Tololotu. Cool. It's all um, my usually. I usually get um. One of my kickboxing coach, Uncle um, Doug Amaral, he's the other. He's my my last corner man, but he he wasn't able to come. So, um, okay. my uncle Mike Tololo too. He's a, he's my other he's my other kickboxing coach, and he's been helping me out for this camp a lot. When are you flying out there? We're gonna fly out next week, fight nice. week. It's just, um, it's easy to acclimate to Vegas. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Done, done it how many times, right? You fought like, in Vegas, right? It's nothing new. Yeah, Nine Island, not that bad, bro. We good. Cool. How's this fight <laughs> yeah. playing out on May twenty second? How do you envision the fight unfolding? Man, it's always it's no prediction it's always it's always intention and it's always the finish bro it's like i don't have any predictions i don't predict anything i train to kill that's basically it and that's not disrespect to my opponent or anything i'm just letting him know that's what it's about letting everybody know out there i ain't like oh yeah i'm gonna come up here catch him with a hook in a straight right leg no i'm gonna go in there and punch your head off or i'm gonna rip it off yeah. Straight up, like that's what it is. Stay away or hold on tight. You talked about getting new management. Uh, how many more fights do you have left on your UFC contract? Do you know that? Oh, it's my last one, bro. Is it really? Okay. Yeah, it's my last one. So, I mean, I got to show up. Got to show up and get my brand out. So, you know, you can renegotiate if, 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 if possible. If not, then, you know, I'll, I'll make do with what I got to do and take the next step from on my path, bro. And, you know, getting getting back in there and getting back in the cage. So are you just treating this like any other fight, no added pressure, knowing it's the last fight, or does mentality... Well, I mean, there's always pressure, right? It's how yeah. you deal with it. It's how you compartmentalize your stress, right? Yeah. There's all these things to take in factor, and like I can put that in front. I can put all my energy on that, but why, mm -hmm. right? My energy, my energy is to be the best martial artist I can be, to be the best athlete I can be, to, be the, to entertain, because that's what I'm getting paid to do. I better get in there next week and entertain these fans. So UFC or any other or any other venue sees that and they're like, okay, we want this guy, we want him again, right? Like, fuck, I gotta be on comp. I gotta, I gotta show the company that I'm here for for draw eyes in. So I mean, and you know what? Like, I love to talk. Talking is something I love to do. It's natural, bro. But I need my hands and my feet to talk next week, and I'm gonna show that. That's my plans. And and I know I'm sure you want to stay with the UFC, but there's probably a little bit of an intrigue with Bellator. The fact that they've done a couple events in Hawaii. How cool would that be to be in a big promotion and fight in uh, you know in Hawaii? Hey, bro, let me be happy and take in my responsibilities. If I can continue my this this joyride with with UFC, but great, you know what I mean. But in the end, like I need to take care of my responsibilities. And UFC is a great is a great promotion to be in. And Bellator is too. I have no ill will against any of them because you know what? Whoever picked me up, they're gonna be helping me take care of what I gotta take care of. Well said. Right? And then that's where I got to implement myself and show my value and my worth and what I work to the company and which they're going to pay me. That's why I have this team here and we're working with, with different guys. So I know my value. I need, I, need, I, need, I need to show the company that I know my value and they need to put value into me. Just like all these other top tier fighters. Yeah. Right? And where, wherever they go. You talk about being plant-based. What's your favorite meal that you can have that's on the plant-based diet? Because I'm curious because I've been trying to implement more plant stuff in, but is there any like a go-to meal that you really like eating? No, it's like, you know what really helped me enjoy food more? Like, mm. I'm not on the whole like, oh, you got a fast thing, but it's just like, bro, when you deplete yourself from not eating something and choices, bro, everything will taste better. Just like wa yeah. Just like water, bro. It's like when you run, right, and you're dead dehydrated, you ain't looking for a Pepsi. You ain't looking. You looking for water because why the thing tastes so good. That's the same thing with with plants too, bro. The thing is, is when we get into these plant based things and you stop trying to eat sugar and all these things, everyone's like, "Bro, can I eat this?" It's just like, yeah, you can. You just have a choice to eat other things. Yeah. Because if you were on an island, if you was in on in, if you was in, and that's all you could eat, you can eat them. You know. So, but the thing is, is like that's what helped me get over. All this because I'm a simple guy, bro. I like beans and rice, beans and potatoes. Like, I carbs is energy, 
greens and the rest of the rainbow colors of fruits as as minerals and nutrients right that's that's it but carbs bro i love carbs i love potatoes i love rice like that's like my go-to and then you got your spices and that's where it's just like anything bro everything's hard if you don't know what to do but then you know how to spice things up what not to use it's not just what to use it's what not to use how how often do you um how often do you fast you're mentioning fasting Oh, my intermittent fast throughout the week, at least three, four times a week. And then closer to fights and even when I'm getting closer, like fights, I try and do a prolonged fast, you know, more than more than 24 hours or more than 36 hours nice. just to just to, just to get your body right. Like that's just something we're all naturally born to do that we don't do. It's not like I'm not like, oh, you need to do this and all that. I just go, bro, I know all the Animal Kingdom dudes all do that. When two wolves fight and one is all messed up, bro, they go in the cave and they chill. Until they healed up, they don't go and eat. They don't wake up for go breakfast. They don't wake up to have lunch. You know what I mean? There's yeah. no breakfast. They eat when their when their body tells them to eat. They don't have this. Oh, I gotta wake up and do that. It's not a pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern. That's a program. So, I think try just be more be conscious of that. I'm not saying I don't do that. I just I try and do it more, especially when I'm trying to perform and yeah. be at optimum. Right? There's tons of when benefits eat- to fasting. I do. I do the same thing. I do it a couple days a week. I do the sixteen eight, where you know, let's say I skip like a breakfast, I'll have like you know black coffee or something, and then I yep, eat. And yep. it, it makes a huge difference. I, I agree. It I'm does, right? You. And the thing is, the thing is, is like just like plants, right? Just like how you got into to fasting, being plant based. If you get keen in that, your body will start talking to you, just like how your body talks to you when you fast. Like, yeah. I'm dead serious, right? But it's about you got to go through that discomfort, and then you start feeling the progression through the process and you're like oh wow oh 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 okay okay like it, it triggers you differently right hence why you believe in it more it yeah. stimulated you grabbed you you're like oh what the and that's what plants did for me so the, if you're on the fasting thing bro you're on the you're on a great trend already you know what i mean yeah. it's about depleting your cravings yeah bro when nope. you can deplete your emotions it's so easy to eat because a gorilla don't a gorilla doesn't care what he's eating as long as he's eating a plant <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't you know we don't only we're the only mammals that we're emotional human beings so we're emotional so we're gonna eat off of emotions happy sad irritated mad right like so that part when you fast it helps that it helps those those grinding things because it's like I, I never eat for two days why well, I know this is gonna taste damn good for me or at least I know it's nutrient dense it's yeah. the thing too but you can be vegan but it doesn't mean you're nutrient dense no well said. eating impossible eating impossible burgers and you know. One 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 vegan chicken sandwich isn't nutrient dense. That's just that's just processed food. It's still processed. You know what I mean? It's still calorie intake. You're getting energy from calories, but it doesn't. It doesn't. There's no nu- there's no nu- nutrients in it. You know, I wouldn't be plant based if I was malnourished. No, no, not, of course. You know yeah. I, mean? I feel I'm plant based because I feel better for myself. It's not because I like. Yes, yeah, save the world. I'm very empathic from being plant based, but like I get it, bro. I don't pay your bills. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, with, I'm t- totally with you there. That that makes yeah. a lot of sense. I remember my last question, by the way. Um, I noticed you're you're not on social media much. Is that by design? Or are you yeah. kind of just trying to trying to stay away from that stuff? Because yeah. I think I think it's great, man. Uh yes, yeah, bro. Like you know, just it's a waste of time, like, right? Well, I mean, not this a waste of time. There's a time to be branded, but you know, this last year I really wanted to work on me, and it's just like they're like, why, Ans? What happened to all the videos? It's like, bro, I still do that. I just put my phone down. <laughs> You know, I'm still this. I just whatever you see outside, like I just I just put it down, and I've just been you know happy building myself, building my relationship. You do the TikToks though, or the reels. I see those a lot. You do a great job with those, by the way. Yeah, I thank you, thank you. And it's just th- th- those things come and go for me too. It's, it's like like before I had these things where I'd wake up and have all these ideas, bro, and I'd want to do it, and it, that's why it came out organically. And then some days I'm like that, and I just start putting it out, and the next day, and then. It's just if it doesn't come to me, I won't do it because it ain't organic. If I'm trying too hard, I'm, I'm just like, eh, it's not authentic to me. You know, and you yeah. see that now on social media, and that's why people are some people are so over it because it's just like, man, there's no authenticity. You know what I mean? And I love like yesterday or what is it Sunday? I love a good I love a good sob story. I love a heartfelt message, but it's like y'all know you getting them likes for your mom for Instagram, not for your. Mom. <laughs> right? so- you know, that- and it's cool it's cool but it's just it is what it is right so yeah. those things it's just like i don't like living up to the hype expectation of things yeah it's like when let, some- let me tell you something though you lived up to the hype in this interview yancey i really appreciate it i uh, always get catching up with you man it's ufc fight Sorry, coming yeah, here yeah. may 22nd anyone you want to thank any sponsors any social media i'll give you the last word uh thank everybody bro last year gave me a lot of gratitude so um thank my 
my nutritionist, delicious health care, thank my strength and conditioning coach, um, uh, trust, t- tactical strength and conditioning, Darren, Darren Yap, uh, Gracie Technics, West Oahu MMA, Uncle Doug, Uncle Mike, West Side, West Side Striking, Pat, Tenor, Ruka, all these guys, I mean, Uncle Jimmy, um, Barrows, brother, this is going to go on and on. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, James. <laughs>